Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And today I am joined by the US Education uh, for by Killian. His name is Steve Asus. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Of so course, the pleasure is online. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And today we're gonna be taking a closer look at the brand new release by the company by Killian. And this one is called Rolling in Love. So make sure to stay tuned. So this fragrance, like I said, is a brand new release, 2019. The perfumer for this one is Pascal Garon, who has also made a few other fragrances for the house of By Killian. But of course, I have you on camera now, so you have all the knowledge and insight, so I'm gonna turn things to you if you don't Thank mind. Thank you, I appreciate it. And, and to your point, right? So he created Gold Night for us. Yeah. Um, if you've ever smelled My Kind of Love, he did. he's made the oh, adult yeah, fragrance. Right. Yeah. So you might find like some similarities between that one and this one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so Rolling in Love, new fragrance, we're so excited about this fragrance and it really explores a theme that Killian loves exploring, right? So anyone who's a fan of the brand, who's just seen the fragrance, he loves exploring the themes of love as like this ultimate addiction. Okay. Um, but how do you capture love like in a fragrance, right? right? What's the closest you can get to like this feeling of love? And that's what this fragrance looks to bring out. Um, so the fragrance itself is inspired by a trip that Killian did to, in Barcelona. Okay. He went to a museum and he was looking at like all the Picasso works. And awesome. over time, like, like Picasso's style like evolved, right? So in the beginning he would paint like in blues and there'd be pinks and then eventually it was like cubism, right? Okay. And there was a departure there for Picasso and Killian was inspired by that and he's like, hey, I want to look for a different way to make my fragrance and that departure for us resulted in the first fragrance ever that's a that's monochromatic awesome. fragrance, right? So the whole fragrance is one color, it's white. That's amazing <laughs> that you bring that up because yeah. I actually do have synesthesia. So there's a bit of an overlap between the senses. And so sometimes I translate smells into color, sometimes smells into taste. Like I know this sounds really, really weird, but the smell of a fragrance Santa Maria Novella kind of reminds me of the taste of uh, olives okay. and so it's a it's a very weird thing that happens and coincidentally when I smelled this one for the first time I do definitely get that white nuance but there's a hint of red in there and I think that's on account of that like cherry like almond note that's utilized in the opening but I really enjoy the smell and I'm so excited to let you guys and gals know a little bit more about it but let's go ahead and start things off by taking a very quick and close look at the presentation sure so as you know at Killian the first shot is always on the house cool <laughs> and I'm so excited to offer you our rolling in love fragrance thank you thank you and full disclosure I have smelled this I also have it on my hand thank you so much and I have it doused all over me <laughs> <laughs> that introduction is amazing it's so good yeah, so we love to give an inspiration because we want to really put you in this like moment that Killian is in, right? Wherever he is around the world where he's inspired happens to be here. It's in Barcelona, right? That's awesome. Um, but again, the inspiration being love and you have this incredible bottle that's red. And the idea behind the red is like a heart that's like bleeding from love, right? So the red is actually a very unique color red. It's like a blood yeah. red. Um, and of course, on the sides of the bottles, you have our uh, shield of Hector and Achilles. That's, yeah. you know, something that's really personal to the brand. It's on all of our bottles. So, so what do you think of the scent? So in terms of the scent, I really love the way that it unfolds on skin. So it opens up with this nice, bright, juicy overtone. So I get a little bit of like that cherry like almond, but the cherry is not overly strong. It doesn't smell overly fruity or robust, but it has a sensual component to it. I don't know how much of that is coming from the florals and how much of that is coming from like that mental subconscious association with the cherry. Right. <laughs> but as it starts to dry down, I do get a little bit of that orris that starts to come through. Uh, the good news in the case of this one is I don't find it to be overly lipsticky because I know in some other fragrances it could be. Uh, as it starts to dry down a little bit more, I do get the musks that come into play. I know a lot of people are typically anosmic to a lot of musks, but there's certainly a musky backbone in this one that you cannot miss. It kind of all blends in together. Yeah. And actually, orris is a, is a flower that's used that actually enhances other ingredients in a fragrance. Okay. So it maybe allows us to smell the musk a little bit more yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, than we typically would. Um, but yeah, I love that you have this like picture of like the three different layers and they're all white, right? So that's that yeah. monochromatic white, but different textures, right? You've got almond yeah. milk and the floral aspect. So really, really different, really out there. The musk accord is the one thing that I like say is like yeah. the one thing about the scent you want to talk about because yeah, of course. it's 50% of the fragrance composition is musks. Um, the IFF actually worked on this musk accord that has seven different musks to really awesome. give you the skin-like feeling. Because remember, the idea is like love, a love that gets under your skin. 
how do you do that with like an awesome musk, right? That has that skin-like yeah. feeling. I mean, I think that that really amps up and brings out the sensuality in the fragrance. And the good thing about the musks utilized in this one is that they don't come across as aggressive or domineering or anything like that. Like, yes, it is in the base. And of course the molecular structure of the musks is a little bit bigger. So it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to evaporate. And I think that that's one thing to attribute to the longevity of the fragrance, but I get, so I know it's all synthetic musks because, you know, you know, let's be vegan friendly here. And I get the embretolide, the galaxolide, and all these other musk ingredients. And I like how some of them contribute to the lactonic feel of the scent. So it definitely has that milky prowess about it. And I like how, although all of these various elements are in here and all these textures are in here, they never supersede or override the other ingredients in here. So it's a nice union and marriage of it's everything. It's like a balance, right? It's like yeah. a perfect balance and like harmony of everything working together, so. That's awesome. This is really, really good. Well, I'm glad you liked it. And I'm glad the, like the first thing it's crazy that you kind of smell is red, right? And the bubble. Yeah. Like, like how insane is that? I mean, it <laughs> happens a lot. You know, a lot of bottles come out. It's a red bottle and then you smell and you're like, yeah, I think I am picking up on something red in here. But ultimately, um, I think, you know, the smell is ultimately what's more important than, you know, what images pop up in your head. But the florals in here, I like how they're not overly strong in the sense that it would make it a, a feminine perfume. You know what? There's like a balance with the florals too, right? And you know, I, I talk about this all the time. Like there are things that are unique to every brand, yeah. right? So every brand's got its point of difference that makes them unique. It's like their belief system. Yeah. At Killian, there's a lot of things that make us unique that are very different. So one right. is like the weapon and the shield, right? Yeah. Wearing your fragrance as a shield of protection or a weapon of seduction. The other aspect of it is this like notion of light and dark. Okay. Right. So, you know, at Killian, we believe that everyone's got this light, innocent side that's super playful and super fun but this dark and sensual side. The Oris and the Freesia here were actually used um, really strategically by both Killian and Pascal, right? So the idea behind them is that the Freesia acts as like this light, fresh, kind of innocent floral, okay. whereas the Oris, because it's more earthy, is that seduction, right? And they kind of balance out together. So it's like every layer's got like balance within that layer, right? And it's you can tell like it was constructed with a lot of purpose you know it's not like the notes were thrown in here haphazardly and there's just this sweetness that i get in the opening that lingers throughout the entire progression of the scent and i think that that's one of the reasons why i'm so drawn to this i mean i love almond i love heliotrope which is also said to give off an almond like vibe and i have a few synthetic versions of heliotrope heliotropics and if i'm not mistaken but this is so good i'm telling you this is like it's it's fruity, it's sensual, it's addictive. Well, I was kind of prepared for any reaction today, right? Because I was like, yeah. I'm gonna come on there and I'm gonna spray this fragrance. I'm like, <laughs> it could go bad. <laughs> and listen, but... it happens, you know? There are a lot of floral fragrances that I really don't enjoy. And of course the Narcissus uh, did scare me in this one a bit. And I know we mentioned this in the previous video, but it can kind of give off like a sharp, heady sure, feel. Sure. And I don't get that in this one at all. Like. Uh, Freesia, Narcissus, those types of ingredients I typically like veer away from, but right. this one is awesome. It's just put together so well. So would you wear this? I would totally wear this one, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect autumn scent, but I think there's a versatility in there that it can be worn all year round as long as you're wearing it in like a climate controlled environment. So I really enjoy this one and I would venture to say that the performance on this one longevity projection wise is also above average. Absolutely. I mean, when you're dealing with something that has 50% of the composition coming from a base, like a musk, okay, yeah. right? You're dealing with a fragrance that's gonna have longevity. And that's really something that's unique to the brand, right? So at Killian, most of our fragrances are the gourmand, which most bases are gourmands, right? You've got vanillas and musks and anything edible. Yeah, sure. And here you go. You've got some rolling in lava. That's Special awesome. Special blend of musk. Uh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks again, Steve. My I really pleasure. do appreciate thanks everything. For me. This was of course. Amazing. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, if you took something of value from this video, I would appreciate it if you could support what I have been doing for the past seven plus years. It's easy and it's free. All it requires is you clicking that red subscribe button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.